This is the channel where we learn from some of your favorite artists. My name is Liza Quinn. Welcome or welcome back. Today we are checking out a version of Bad Romance by a group called Forestella. If you like my top, you can rent it at thelimitlesscloset.com. Don't forget, let's go ahead and dive right in. The richness in that low end, wow. I want your trouble, your touch of your hand. I want your latest studies, kissing the sin. I want your love. Love, 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 I want your love. Their blend is so beautiful. I was not expecting that like tenor tone to come in there with that beautiful sort of mixed tone. Obviously, like I mentioned, the bass, starting with that I think was really clever because you really, it draws you in. Beautiful with that little sort of vibrato, but it's, they sort of have this classical feel where they are kind of giving it these great crescendos and decrescendos, which are basically these uh, volume swells. It's beautiful because they're really, not just dynamic in their, their background vocals and everything they're doing together, but really tight. It just feels like a unit, which is exactly what you want when, when you're with a group, right? Okay, let's keep going. Make sure you stick around to the end and we'll sort of recap the things that we're learning as we go. When you in my window, baby, you see, I want your love. Love, 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 I want your love. are so impeccably tight and so on point. Their pitch is so precise. Obviously, these are things I have to, you know, this is for all first impression, but I am really impressed. There was a beautiful thing that happened in the arrangement. I don't know if you guys caught that, which I love it because, you know, Lady Gaga songs, she has a theater background, right? And her stuff is very theatrical when you break it down. And and I, I just think this arrangement and this concept just works so well with her music. And so it's like, this is like the perfect song to do this with. Like you're in this really sort of like haunting, beautiful opera. And it's really, really, quite something. It's really effective. <laughs> With this and we can hear what the strings are doing back there. And this and then here towards the end where it changes right there. 
that is brilliant. I absolutely love that. Okay, let's see if I can find my place here. Let's pick up where we left off. Where is this? It's enormous! With the energy of the crowd and just the whole performance. I want your love and I want your revenge. I want your love. I love revenge. Vitton amour. I want your revenge. Vitton amour. I want your revenge. I feel how she feels, and in person, it must be really quite incredibly moving. I love this! Okay, right off the top, I already know what I'm thinking in terms of our big takeaways here. There's so many, obviously, every time we watch these things. You know, there's a there's a huge lesson here in really knowing your strengths and playing up on your strengths. And for example, they are be beautifully, I imagine classically trained singers, I can just tell from their technique and the way they work together. I feel like they are capitalizing on what they do best. And they are taking that and showing you what this song would sound like if they had recorded it first. And that's the trick to covers, because it's a uh, it's it's an homage, right? It's like showing someone through something that's familiar to them how you would tackle it. And it sort of helps also people to appreciate you in a way that they might not if they hear a song for the first time that they don't recognize. And it's so incredibly cool. And taking a melody that's already iconic and cool and sort of giving it your own spin. So there's that. Capitalizing on the strengths and the individuality. The fact the fact that they are so in tune to each other, their vibratos are together. And I've talked about this before. When you are with a group, like for me uh, as a backup singer, I worked many years as a backup singer, I would have to sort of really study how the lead singer or any other singers in the band for that matter would approach vibrato. Some people have a more straight approach, to, depending on the genre of music. Some people have a wider, since this is more of a classical feel, it's more, want and romance, right? It's like a wider, slightly wider vibrato. If you have vibrato, it's kind of going at different speeds. It, they can kind of rub together. They can kind of clash. It can feel kind of messy when you have that many singers going at the same time. So the fact that they are so, so well rehearsed and just obviously they're seasoned pros. I mean, side note, look at their performances, their faces. They are, I mean, giving it to you. They're stars, right? But they're, they're just so good together. And I think that's what really works, right? And each singer kind of going in the place where, where they need to go, where they're gonna kind of complement the arrangement. That bass singer really stands out because there's so much meat in his tone, which brings me to takeaway number three, which is understanding frequencies. It's important to think about your voice in terms of frequencies. And I want you to think about it like when you are fixing the car stereo to maybe have a little bit more bass, right? A little bit more treble, a little bit more mid-range. The mid-range is gonna bring out what, what is going to kind of of cut through the rest of the arrangement, right? That thing that's gonna like bring presence to the voice. The upper is gonna give you uh, that treble, is gonna give you a little bit of that glisten, that sibilance. 
those little high kind of touches that can really emphasize a lot of the nuances of the things that you're doing, a lot of the inflections. And then you have your low end, right? And being able to sort of work with the frequencies in a way where they all work together. You're thinking about an actual mix. You have to think like a mix engineer with the ring in your voice. You can kind of control how much or how little of each frequency and how they all work together. And I think these guys have really mastered that. So pay attention to that. Now that this group is on my radar, what should I check out next? I picked this one because I thought it would just be a really cool place to start, but I'm just kind of going with what you guys tell me. Please comment that below. Let me know if you found value in this video and if there's other stuff that we can learn from on the next one. There are gonna be more videos popping up over my shoulder. Make sure you check some of those out and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'll see you next time.